Okay, so we're doing a quick review of the 2023 Major League Baseball London Series between the Cubs and the Cardinals. Four years ago, we did a similar review. Um, things that came out four years ago that I think they could do better, uh, commentary or, or broadcasters, um, advertising, and ticket price. And again, these are the things we are going to be discussing, but for different reasons. So, on the ticket price, I felt that the lower-end tickets were actually very, very reasonably priced, around £50, which is around, I think, $60-odd. Uh, very, very reasonably priced, uh, £50-55 I found online, just doing my research on what ticket price brackets we're looking at. It's the upper-end ticket price that, again, is a little bit on the steep side, but I think with the rising costs and inflation, actually haven't gone up as much in price as I thought. It's those third-party resellers where the ticket price has exploded. So the top-end tickets were around £350-£360, which isn't too bad. I was a bit critical of the top end uh, ticket uh, tiers four years ago, but I think with, with inflation and the cost of living, they've actually kept that top end price capped a little bit. But here's the thing, empty seats again. People may have bought the tickets, could not go to the game, put the tickets back on resale uh, through the legitimate StubHub and, and Ticketmaster and those other uh, ticketing websites that are legitimate where they buy tickets back off you and then put them up for resale and the markup was ridiculous. So when going through the Major League Baseball website or going through um, uh, whatever ticketing websites you're looking at 350 top end. When you go through the third party resellers a thousand pounds for a ticket um, which is ridiculous unless you've got some some cash to spend uh, that is a ridiculous, ridiculous um, amount to pay for the, a game. Um, but we do see this a lot with major sporting events where people aren't able to attend. They've already bought tickets at a more reasonable price. They resell the tickets back through or, or, or through StubHub or Ticketmaster or some other resale ticketing sites, and then they put a markup on. So they buy the tickets back and then they sell them on again. That is ridiculous. So that's something Major League Baseball's got to keep an eye on. Fact, all sports leagues have got to keep an eye on. That was ridiculous. A so ticketing price at the top end and resale tickets, scary. Again, empty seats as well. People obviously bought the tickets initially. So that's tickets have been sold, according to Major League Baseball. So they made some revenue on that. The ticket purchaser has then resold those tickets legitimately through a, a third party. That third party, StubHub or Ticketmaster or another website, has then put them up for resale, and that is ridiculous. So, yeah, paid attendance and actual attendance, two different things. Uh, another thing, yeah, as I say, the empty seats, fans leaving early, which is a shame. Fans leaving early, which is a shame, um, especially in game one, sixth, seventh inning. It was very, very clear Fans were starting to stream out. And this is a problem with an evening game uh, in London. Public transportation across the UK, but in, in London or any major city, can be a bit haphazard over weekends when you've, when you've got engineering works. And, of course, we've had a lot of industrial action uh, on trains and buses across the UK over the last year or so. Very noticeable people were rushing to the exits to get on trains, get taxis, get Ubers, get buses to then go to a secondary destination maybe to, or, or to the car parks to... to to leave the stadium early, uh, beat the rush. That was very, very noticeable. It's more so in game one than game two. I think game two being more daytime start time, I think was 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 a was good. Um, but game one evening start on a Saturday in, in London, uh, maybe move that start time forward by like maybe three four hours. You may get fans staying for longer, which means they were going to spend more money on concessions such as food and merchandise. Um, which, again, interesting. Also, broadcasting. I'm not a BT Sport subscriber. I, I use the BBC Sport website, but it was buried on the BBC Sport website. You had to find it. It wasn't straight up there on the live guide. You had to dig for it a little bit. So they could do that better, but that's on the broadcast. That's not on Major League Baseball. I did feel there were, uh, the commentary, too much unnecessary just chit-chat about non-baseball-related things. Just a lot of waffle. It would have been better if, if the commentary team wasn't bad, but a lot of unnecessary chit chat. That's down to the producers. That's down to the director and the editor. They're telling these people, this is what we want to talk about this, talk about that. Um, which I think not great if you want to learn the sport or if you're a casual viewer or a new viewer. That was a bit of a problem. Uh, in regards to the fans actually in attendance, a lot of overseas fans again. Now, I don't know the full percentages, but I looked on several news websites. The CNN one was quite telling. 
Now, they've obviously got a reporter on the ground. And you can take what you want out of CNN. And the same with ESPN as well. Again, reporters on the ground. They seem to pick out the American fans who would come over to view the games as tourists. Rather than local fans or new fans from London or, or the UK or residents in the UK uh, who are going you know, to their first ever baseball game ever, maybe. They, they did obviously find the North American fans, predominantly from the US, who'd flown over uh, for tourism purposes, who decided to buy tickets for the game. I don't know the exact percentages, but I wouldn't be surprised if they were similar to 2019, where 30% of fans were overseas tourists. Um, if that's the same again, then I'm not sure if you're attracting new fans, because these fans already existed. And I think the goal of Major League Baseball is to grow the fan base. And we could you know, we can definitely tell that there's a lot of Major League Baseball fans in the UK. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure the same is true for Paris in 2025. A lot of uh, Major League Baseball jerseys being worn, not just of the Cubs and the Cardinals, which was good, but it does appear to me from reports that most fans in the London Stadium are already existing Major League Baseball fans rather than new fans coming in um, to, to, to catch a game for the first time. And, 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 and this leads into the final point, advertising and promotion. I've seen one advert in the build-up one advert on YouTube for the Major League Baseball London Series this year. 2019, they really drove the advertising and promotion home. Now, whether they got their promotion strategy right in 2019, we debated that with use of Jimmy Carr, but there was definitely a lot of focus put upon the advertising and promotion. This time round, not so much. I saw one promotional advert online. Now, the difference being now to four years ago is I watch a lot less television than I did four years ago. That is definitely a noticeable thing, but their online advertising, their newspaper advertising, magazine advertising, and billboards, one advert that I've seen uh, in, in, in the build-up to this London series. So have they got their promotional strategy right is, is something to note. But the games themselves weren't bad. It was nice to see a split series. Uh, obviously, the first game being a blowout, okay, it may have also contributed to fans leaving early. Uh, if they go in, in, in next year, I think that that first game, if it's going to be an evening game, maybe a slightly earlier start time rather than a, a, a ten past six p.m. start, maybe ten past four, ten past three. Uh, just move that start time forward a little bit. You may entice fans to stay that little bit longer and avoid that mass exodus to avoid the, the rush to leave the stadium. Uh, the, the the daytime start time. Uh, was was a pretty good good bet. I think maybe both games should be day games uh, next year, quite possibly. I think that might benefit because the the optics of fans leaving early isn't isn't a good look, when especially when they're streaming out the stadium. Um, but the atmosphere was pretty decent. Um, the lack of home runs was a bit bit disappointing. Only three home runs in both games, and also the scoring being down is is, is was was quite noticeable. I think the weather conditions had a lot to do with it, and the preparation time I think for both teams had a lot to do with it. Uh, obviously, you're going to have jet lag, and both teams are from the Midwest, so they've got to come over to London, have a very short preparation time, a lot of media commitments, and then they've got to go out and play two games, um, especially in very hot, humid conditions. These these were some of the hottest days of the year so far. Very high humidity. And with the way the stadium is, is constructed, it's basically a giant bowl. Uh, so that really traps that humidity and heat inside the stadium, which if they were using something like the Oval, um, that wouldn't be as much of an issue with, with the heat can escape a little bit. And it's more open to a, a breeze, uh, which was an, the initial plan was to use the Oval. The Cricket World Cup got in the way of that in 2019. And this year we've got the Ashes series currently taking place. So to reconfigure the Oval uh, would be an issue. And again, that's the final point I want to talk about is the, is the stadium reconfiguration of the playing surface and the seating. Again, taxpayer money is going to have would have been used because of the ownership of the stadium. Had they actually used the oval, it would be private money being used by the stadium operator. So that has to be you know bared in mind. Obviously, it's going to be profitable. So you know VAT taxes on on, on food and, and, and merchandise purchases and, and ticket purchases will go back into the HM Revenue and Customs, the which is the British government and their tax collecting, uh, on top of the, the sales of you know, the, the merchandise and everything. But taxpayer money being used again uh, to reconfigure the stadium. I, I don't think those negative headlines want to come out. Um, and um, that's something we'll have to see how much it actually costs this time around, obviously with inflation and rising costs. 
that's going to be something of note. It took 18 days to reconfigure. It's going to take some time to reconfigure it back from when West Ham start their pre-season uh, in, in uh, late July, early August. Um, so the stadium is going to have to be reconfigured yet again. Again, that's a, a cost. So it'll be interesting to see when those figures do get released. It was around four or five million, I believe, four years ago. I think that's going to be higher. I did. I think I said something about nine million. I think somewhere between the seven to nine million range cost for the reconfiguration of the stadium um, of taxpayer money being spent. Uh, on the on that reconfiguration so there's certain things that i think again major league baseball could fit the bill possibly they have the money they make enough money they could have fit the bill for the stadium reconfiguration that kind of thing uh because it's a good pr exercise if you're trying to grow the sport and, and, and have a good relationship because they've obviously made this commitment to london the london mayor's office obviously are also backing this commitment by the major leagues to keep coming over i think they're trying to entice the double ihf world championship uh ice hockey uh in i think 2028 they're part of the bidding process for that they want to keep the nfl coming to london i think they want to entice the nba back to london so a good pr exercise i think they did better than four years ago but there's still some room for improvement anyway that's my review of things i think that's the, the improvement areas are uh, required i think they've learned some of the lessons from four years ago but there's still some tinkering to, to get it right but no sporting event ever truly gets everything right there's always going to be critiques i'm going to say that now but i think it was a decent advert for major league baseball um but a lot of overseas fans yet again empty seats fans leaving early in game one probably because of the start time and the blowout score uh pricing that upper end ticket price and the resale of tickets uh through legitimate sources again some of the extortionate prices on resale sites something to keep an eye on uh, but overall i think they're starting to learn the lessons and, and make it a more fan friendly experience uh, and we'll see what next year has to give has to produce for us and we'll do a preview for next year and discuss uh, next year's dates and the teams involved in due course but for me for now thank you very very much for watching please place your thoughts in the comment section below and i'll have some more content for you very very soon